Good morning, all. We are excited to be here with you. It is Friday, July 19th. For those of you that love to know the date when you're watching this on replay, as a friendly reminder, if you are watching it on replay, just put hashtag replay in the comments. And that really just helps us kind of see who's tuning in at a later date. If you're here with us live, we love to have you chime in, put comments in, tell us where you're um, tuning in from, ask questions. Um, we want to make sure that this is the most beneficial for, for you guys. We do it for you. So with that, um, I am going to open us up in prayer and then we will go about our, our time with Henry Newman. So dear Lord, um, I just come to you this morning on behalf of all that are listening to this live or will be listening to it later Lord I just pray that a seed is planted a new seed Lord a seed that um, is gonna bear good fruit Lord this is a season in which you are doing new things as I talk with people around there is so much shifting and shaking happening in individuals lives Lord I just pray encouragement into each one of those lives as the storms of life come and they would threaten to demolish the house Lord we can stand firm that we have built our foundation on the rock Lord like Josh said yesterday that we are like Peter that we were brave enough to get out brave and courageous enough that even amidst the fear we got out of the boat and kept our eyes on Jesus and Lord, even in his failing to take his, or his failing of taking his eyes away from him, Lord, God was gracious and pulled him back up and elevated him. Or Peter had such a great part of the story of the kingdom of God. And Lord, we are Peters in our own sphere of influence. Lord, may, us, may we not shy back and allow the enemy, the loud voice of the enemy to tell us that we're not worthy, to tell us that there's not enough, that we're not enough. Lord, those are lies. And we bind them up and we, and we place them in the pit of hell, Lord, where they belong. Lord, may we fill our, our mind and our hearts, Lord, with your word, with your truth, with your promises. Lord, we are who you say we are. Lord, may we create disciplines that we are in your presence so that we may hear each and every day how precious we are in your sight. Lord, I woke up this morning and there was a heavy dew over the cushions and the blankets that we left out to dry yesterday. Lord, it's the dew of heaven. Lord, without rain, things can sustain because of your faithfulness of coming each and every day like the dew of heaven. Lord, we thank you this day. We thank you for everything that we have. Lord, and even in our needs, Lord, we trust that you will be faithful in meeting those needs as you have said in your word. Lord, so with this, we come to an end of this morning and just say thank you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> All right, friends. Well, our devotion by Henry Nguyen today is called Tempted to Replace Love with Power. <clears throat> so he says, what makes the temptation of power so seemingly irresistible? Maybe it is that power offers an easy substitute for the hard task of love. It seems easier to be God than to love God, easier to control people than to love people, easier to own life than to love life. Jesus asks, do you love me? We ask, can we sit at your right hand and your left hand in the kingdom? Matthew 20, 21. We have been tempted to replace love with power. Jesus lived that temptation in the most agonizing way from the desert to the cross. The long, painful history of the church is the history of people ever and again tempted to choose power over love, control over the cross, being a leader over being led. Those who resisted this temptation to the end and thereby give us hope are the true saints. Okay, friends. Well, this is a, 
a pretty deep one, right? I, I know that, that this one struck me in a, in a pretty interesting light because we don't really like to compare and contrast um, the love that, that God bestows upon us with power. Right. It seems that as though many times in our lives, um, you know, we're constantly encouraged to seek after this power or we think we're entitled to all of these things that that we deem a, as important. Right. And and Nguyen here sets a, a great contrast again, showing us this this upside down kingdom, as I so often refer to it, in which Jesus says, you know, the greatest command commandments are to love. First, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your strength, and your mind. And the second is like it, to love your neighbor as yourself. Those are the two great commandments that that those of us who walk the, the Christian path or even the Jewish path are, are, are called to, you know, adhere to. And, you know, when we really think about that, that really changes our lives. You know, many times we think, oh, we like to we like to be good people, we like to treat people well, but we're also worried more about ourselves. We're more worried about if we're getting this, if we're going after this, if this is fair for us, if this is, um, you know, a, a chance for us to to get ahead in some way. And and Nguyen is exactly right that Jesus, in many ways, resisted it or walked the very fine line between these two places, right? Because Jesus both walked in love and treated people, all people, with an amazing kindness and love, and at the same time also walked in power, right? Because he is the Son of God. And so he walked in this authority and in this power, um, proclaiming, um, the kingdom, right? And proclaiming that God still loved people, that God had sent him as a, as a way to, to restore that broken relationship and, and lead them to the back to the right place. So friends, we need to consider the role of power in, in our lives. And right, we, we hear a lot about it today in, in the news, right? We're constantly, even in this election cycle, worried about the abuse of power, or if this person gets power, or if that person gets power, it's going to be the end of all things, right? And yet, friends, we need to take this all the way down to our our level and say, what are we seeking? Are we seeking power so that we can elevate and raise us up? Are we making it about us? Or are we, again, walking out those commandments to love God and to love others, and as a result of that, being infused by the Holy Spirit with power to do the exact same things that Jesus did, which is to point all people back to God the Father, or back to Jesus. So friends, I'm going to just kind of leave that with you to kind of sit and resonate with this morning, because, um, you know, this is, we all think, a little bit differently here and there's not you know just this a b a plus b equals c for all of us that that we all operate and think the same the same way with relation to these but it is very important that we think about the different roles that we play and how we opt for power over love in all of our relationships and and in the different things that we do and so friends my prayer for you today is just that you would stay grounded that you would Again, live out those two great commands. And as you do that, um, I truly believe that, that God is just going to continue to empower you to continue to do that work that you may grow more fully in love with God and, and more fully able to love the people that he places in your path. Um, i like to just kind of go back to what Josh had said about Jesus and that duality of being love and also being the power and authority of heaven. And I know a couple of devotionals ago, we talked about that um, when God, when, excuse me, Jesus was out in the desert with uh, the devil and being tempted. And, you know, the enemy uses the scripture. He, he knows it well too. So sometimes when people say that, uh, they know Jesus. Well, there's a difference between knowing him and knowing him. So, because the, the enemy knows him too. You know, the enemy knows the word of God too. And he knows how to manipulate it. Um, but getting back to point, 
Jesus, if you remember what Josh had said in those moments, he was always very deliberate when he used and released his power. It was never to be serving of himself. It was always to release the glory of God, the miracles, the things, even just with the temptation with the enemy, it was always to point back to God. So that is extremely important. And to kind of speak to the last thing that Josh had talked about, um, just with our world today and, and the election, and, and this is no way meant to get political, um, but many of us can, you know, jump onto social media, the news, the newspaper, however we are perceiving the world, and we can get heavy laden. We can have deferred hope. We can get in fear. All of those things that I've listed are not of God. Now, we're not supposed to put our head in the sand like an ostrich and just not pay attention. Uh, we get to be informed. But seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. And the other one always seems to, the order goes away from me, but ask and thou will receive, knock and the door shall be open to you. There's another one, Josh. Ask, seek, and knock. So again, we talked about first fruits yesterday. And so when you get up, arm your day, arm your day with prayer, you know, in times like this, um, when fear is knocking at your door, or if you've even let fear in, kick, kick it out, get it in its right place and move boldly ahead with courage because courage is not the absence of fear. Courage is moving forward in the presence of fear. So be courageous know that the lord god has overcome this world and that he is the light of this world and so i think one of your biggest things that i would call you to action in in this time in this hour is to embolden your prayer life to get alone with god in the secret place and to pray to pray for this world for this country for your state for your community for your family for your marriage and for your own relationship with Jesus Christ. So that would be the call to action I'd have for you. All right, and I will just echo that, my friends. Well, we hope that this has blessed you in some way. We hope that you wrestle with this topic and think about think about this for yourself and, and do a little bit of self-examination. And friends, we will catch you next week um, on Monday at 8 a.m. God bless. Have an amazing rest of your day. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.